Hello, uh, Pink and Facebook page. Welcome to the Griffin Park media room. It's all gone very quiet in here, so we'll we'll be we'll be politely di discreet. It's myself and Paddy Davitt here, waiting for the third round Carabao Cup tie. Um, we'll be giving you the team news, Norwich City's team news, as it breaks on Paddy's laptop. It's always the best place for team news to break, isn't it? Indeed, indeed, it is, my friend. Um, yeah, it's nice to have some football to talk about. It's been. Uh, Interesting beautiful, few days. Beautiful night for it, mate. We've just been out there. The sun's peeking over the back of the one of the stands. Um, pitch is looking in good nick, so you know it could be a good night. Let's hope it is. Ed. We'll hope so. Indeed, the weather uh, does look nice. I haven't been out there, but you've at least sampled it. So um, it's a, always a good, interesting place to come. I like coming to Griffin Park. There's a proper atmosphere, proper ground, yeah. um, and you know without violence generally. So that's always helpful. Um, what, what are we expecting from the team then? Pad, what, what do you reckon? How many changes? Who's going to play? We, we, I mean, I was hoping we might get to see Grant Hanley properly today, but yeah. we can't, can we? Because he's cup tied. No, which is a bit of a blow. I must admit that had passed me by, but um, yeah, by all accounts, he played for Newcastle, didn't he, against um, Forest, I think it was, earlier in the competition. Um, but if we look at that area of the pitch, I think Franca will get a go. I think the way the head coach was talking to us on Monday afternoon. In fact, you, here, here we is. go, mate. Uh, well, I can, I can see there we've got Adam bench. Phillips is on the bench. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look at the main team, shall we? Do you want to read it out? Yeah, we've got Gunn, Pinto, Zimmerman, Closer, Husband, so there's only one change for the defence. Reed, Tribal retains his place, so it looks like a two, uh, a three of Rancic, Hulahan, Murphy, that's two new faces, and then Marley Watkins up front, so I make that. A quick tot up, we've got Husband, Reed. Branchich is three, Hulans four, Watkins five changes. Five changes, and then we have Remy Matthews is in goal. So no Michael McGovern today. Uh, Jerome is on the bench along with Viltschut, Steeperman, Tetti, Franca, and Phillips. So no James Madison. No, not a huge surprise. Um, bearing in mind A's workload and B did take a bit of a knock, didn't he, in that incident uh, at Bramall Lane? Uh, why risk him? You know, there's an element here of freshening up and not risking any lads for what in my opinion is the more important game of the two this week and that's Bristol uh, on Saturday um, but given you know Hanley's ruled out Russ Martin's not available Stephen Naismith <laughs> Oliveira still plus the longer term absentees I think Farker said and, and he's delivered there it's pretty much the same personnel just slightly rearranged yeah and it's obviously quite a strong a strong bench isn't it and, and Marcel Frank are back I mean uh, he's on the bench yeah. I guess it, He's probably the kind of player who'll be wanting to get some game time. I'm not saying that necessarily happen, but just in general, he'll he'll be wanting to get back involved because it was obviously clearly difficult for him and then him uh, missing out. I mean, he was a player that was still around the squad yeah. in those during that international break. This, it was just that he was then hasn't been selected, so it must be um you know he must be itching to get some more game time back on the pitch. I think what I mean my immediate reaction to that is that, that is a lineup of a manager who who wants to be in the last 16. You know, there's no. Saying one thing and then doing another by his actions. You know, he said, yes, he needs to freshen it up, but two wins out of two in the cup, and he wanted three out of three. And, uh, you know, when you're making one change after what was a very gruelling uh, game at Bramall Lane, then that tells me he is desperate to progress. And, uh, you know, Zimmerman, that's some minutes he's clocked up this season now. You know, <laughs> Including pre season as exactly, well. Yeah, I mean, to me, it looked, I thought it was leading to, to Franco alongside Closer, but, no, fair enough. He doesn't want to cause too much disruption to a bat line. That, let's let's be honest. He's kept three clean sheets, and uh, you know, Tribal's an interesting one as well. I thought maybe he might just get dipped out. Three games and the type of demands that have been placed on him and Tete, um, particularly without the ball. You know, a lot of acreage, a lot of uh, defensive shape, and a lot of tackling. But I suppose then you look at it, and because he was more or less came in from a cold standing start. Um, free agent had to train on his own most of the summer and clearly his fitness levels aren't what they need to be you can see the logic of that um, I like the top end of the pitch there's plenty of uh, creativity there you know Marley Watkins in that central role um, so there's a bit of pace in behind if the occasion dictates and an ally to that you've got the ball playing creativity of Messrs Francic and Houlihan so um, I'd like to see Josh Murphy tonight really stick, put his hand up you know there's no doubt in you know the guy's got ability but I've just felt in the last two or three games for whatever reason maybe the confidence levels aren't what they needed to be and it's almost he's, he's trying to force something and it's it's not really happened so you know a good dominant performance from him tonight I think with a view to what's happening you know in terms of the league wouldn't go amiss because ultimately it's about progress tonight but 
we're also looking for some trends as well to continue. Yeah, we? and it's interesting with Josh because he was in such good form in August. It sort of flipped quite yeah. quickly, wasn't it? Because it was almost in unplayable form at, at times. Uh, the Brentford lineup is is there too. Uh, quite a young back line by all accounts and a few changes I mean more maybe familiar names on the bench as well Daniel Bentley Ollie Watkins John Egan Ryan Woods Romain Sawyers so it's, you know it's a strong bench for, for Brentford too but a, a fair few changes and you know they've done okay so far the start of the season I and mean, they probably be happy I'm not sure the fans are entirely happy with, uh, no. with the boss at the moment but well I think it's the old cliche about the statistics you can you can dress them up or, or interpret them as you will I mean yes they haven't won a league game but I think Farker surprised me when he said they'd only lost two of the last eight. So you know, that tells me straight away that they're a very difficult side to beat. And, uh, you know, if Norwich aren't at it tonight, we've heard a lot about attitude and, um, you know, no sign of arrogance and don't turn up expecting that you're better players. So that's automatically going to translate. You know, you need to put your shoulder to the wheel and match these teams. And give them their due they've done it the last three games and let's see if we can maintain that tonight yeah absolutely I mean, does that make us fear extra time uh, don't even mention that my friend no uh, done in 90 minutes please done in 90 minutes yeah it's a title for a film and hopefully a title for this afternoon uh, this evening as well uh, don't forget pinkin.com slash live for all the coverage from tonight's game and reaction afterwards of course and we'll bring you uh, keep you up to date with all events and Dave Freezer's here too uh, but until then, cheers, Pat. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers, all, and we will see you uh, over the course of the night. Goodbye.